Hello, welcome to Church Online. It's so great that you're able to join us today. If you don't know me, my name is Tim. I've been a member here at St Barnabas for the past seven years. and I'm going to guide us through our service today. So we are going to have a time of prayer and a time of worship and we're going to hear a word from Danny around 1 Peter. If you're joining us online for the first time today, you are so welcome. Um, you'll see there's a chat box over here or down here. Um, and we really want to see that filled with thanksgiving and testimonies. We believe that um, it's really important to share what God's been doing in the life of our church. Um, actually seeing what God's been doing in other people's lives really helps us build each other up throughout the Old Testament. In fact, we see God telling um, Israel to commit things to memory and to document where he's helped them um, fight and win battles. So we really want to see um, the thanksgiving and testimony of what God's been doing in your life today um, and throughout this week and throughout this time. So share that in the chat box um, either to the side here or down below. Personally, I'm super thankful for my community. Um, I gather with a small group of people to um, intentionally look at what it is to be a follower of Jesus. And I'm really thankful to be able to have that group of people at the moment, um, to be able to share that challenge from God of um, what it is to, what does it look like to be a follower of Jesus at the moment when we can't necessarily leave our homes. So I'm really thankful for having people to be able to share that experience with. So take the next 30 seconds or so um, to have a think about what your Thanksgiving and testimony is and to pop that in the chat. Um, and whilst you're doing that, it would be really great if you could grab a teaspoon from the kitchen um, for yourself or for those around you, if you're watching as a family unit or with other people, um, and a jar of something that you'd like to eat. So that may be um, jam, it might be lemon curd, it might be Nutella, or if you're a real hooligan, it might well be Marmite. Um, we're going to need that for our prayers later on, so if you can grab those bits in preparation, that would be great. If you're joining us from Families Online, hope you had a good time. Um, if you're not sure of what Families Online is, but you're part of a family and you'd like to find out more, head to stbs.org.uk forward slash Families Online. Each week, a fresh set of resources is um, released on there and with age appropriate resources for preschool all the way through to year nine. Um, you can also find information about what's going on with specifically for our youth work and our children's work on there as well. We may not be able to meet in the same physical location at the moment. However, that doesn't mean that God's not doing loads of stuff in the life of our church. Um, there are a couple of things that I'd like to flag up to you that are coming up over the next few weeks or so. Firstly, um, we are currently gathering at midday during the week to have midday prayers. Now, that's been really great to um, be able to spend that time dedicating it to what God's doing, whether you join the Zoom call or whether you set a reminder on your phone um, to be able to pray. Um, and as part of that rhythm of um, continued prayer and petition, we are joining with um, the Anglican Church around the world in praying for God's kingdom to come from the 21st to the 31st of May, from Ascension Sunday to Pentecost. Um, and as part of that, a date to get in your diary for the moment is that on the 30th of May, there is going to be 24 hours of prayer. What that looks like sort of practically, not 100% sure on yet, but make sure that you're signed up to the church emails um, to get more information about that. If you're not, um, just send an email to office at stbs.org.uk and Anna Mel will get you added to those to make sure that you can keep up to date with what's coming up. We're doing Alpha again. Um, it feels like only yesterday that we were finishing up our last Alpha course at the start of the year. However, times have changed. People are asking more than ever questions around life, around faith, around meaning. As a response to that, um, Tim and Helen Jackson and the Bevans are going to be running our Alpha course starting on the 25th of May. And this is a great opportunity to invite people that have been asking these questions to explore the Christian faith, to find out more what it is that um, these followers of Jesus have. Now, invitations can be really difficult. Um, however, the best invite you can make is to invite someone to come along with you to Alpha. Even if you've been a Christian for a long time, we all have questions around faith, and actually it can be really great for people to be able to see that even though we have faith, we still have questions. So if you want to sign up for yourself and a friend, or you want to find out more information about Alpha, head over to stbs.org.uk forward slash alpha for more information and for sign up. Um, 
or reach out to Tim and Helen Jackson or Adrian or Karen Bevan and they'll be able to give you a bit more information about that. Matt and Katie and Barnabas Bear are going to lead us in our action song in just a moment. Um, but before we get into that and all the joy and the excitement um, that that brings, I'd like us just to take a moment to be still and to be quiet and to welcome the Holy Spirit into our homes. Um, this may be one of the few opportunities we get this week to sit quietly and um, let the Holy Spirit really speak into our lives. So if you want to get comfortable, get relaxed, um, close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing that, or maybe look at the ceiling or a blank piece of wall to help you from being distracted. Um, we're just going to spend a moment in quiet. So Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We still our minds, we still our souls. Um, we let our frantic minds just settle and we make space for you now. Get us ready to worship you, God. Jesus, we sing songs about you and to you, not just because it says that we should do in the Bible, but because we want to remind ourselves of just how awesome, how great, how amazing you are. God, we choose to worship you right now. No matter how we're feeling, whether we're feeling stressed or tired or excited, we, we choose to put everything on hold, Lord, and spend the next block of time being with you. Father, prepare us for worship. Amen. Good morning, Sim Barnabas, and welcome to our, our home here uh, in our back room, uh, where we are really excited to be worshipping with you. And uh, we're going to start with a new song, an action song, and Barnabas Bear will show us the actions. And it's a great song about the freedom we now have in Jesus and uh, how that uh, inspires our songs of praise. And we all come together to sing, even if we are apart, we are united in a song, and it's a song lifting up the name of Jesus. So uh, join in and uh, with the actions if you're ready, with the words if you can, uh, and let's just have fun because this is a really fun song. Let's go. <laughs>
victim of never gonna stop singing. Oh, never gonna stop. Every tribe, every tongue, every heart will sing. Every knee we will bow to the risen King. Lift him up, lift him up. Never gonna stop singing. Oh, never gonna stop. Higher, higher, hearts burning bright like a fire, fire. Voices unite, make it louder, louder. We're never gonna stop singing. Oh, we're never gonna stop. Higher, higher, hearts burning bright like a fire. Just there. Give yourselves a pat on the, on the back for doing all those actions. Uh, we're going to continue now in worship with uh, this song again, declaring our freedom in Jesus. Who am I that the highest would wear? I was lost, but he bought me for oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is There's a 
Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Katie. Um, we're going to spend the next just moment in prayer and we're going to take our teaspoons and a jar of something. I've got uh, Natoka chocolate spread. Other brands are available. And we're going to use these to help us actually uh, centre ourselves and just have a, have a bit of time chatting with Jesus and um, seeing what he's got to say. So teaspoon prayers, they stand for thank you, sorry, please. Um, and we're going to hold our teaspoons whilst we do this so we can use it as a thing to remind us. I invite you to close your eyes and to hold your teaspoon and take the next couple of 30 seconds or so just to give thanks to God for all the good things that he has done in our weeks, in our days, in our lives recently. Let's bring that to mind. God, thank you. And now we take our spoons and we say sorry to God. We say sorry to God for the things that we wish we hadn't done, the things that don't glorify God, the things that aren't 
who we know we want to be or who God wants us to be. Lord, we're sorry where we haven't met up to the expectation that we have for ourselves and that you've set for us. And then we say, please. So God gives good gifts to his children. Um, For those people, if you ask him, he will provide for you. So we are going to ask God um, for help in situations for ourselves or for other people or for our world that we live in. Um, If you have a need, let's bring that to God now. Let's ask God for, for help. So God, we ask for your help in our own personal lives, in the lives of our friends, in the lives of those around us. In our world, Lord, we ask for your help. And now take your spoon and have a nice big spoonful of whatever you have got because God gives us good things And he wants us to remember that we are loved and we are chosen and we are his. And he gives good gifts to his children. So have a spoonful now. Mm. Now, problem is, I've now got to make this smooth link into Danny's talk with a mouthful of chocolate spread. So, Danny, over to you. Perspective is key. We often think that God's presence is provided to fix our problems. But what if? God's presence is provided to fix our perspective. I heard that quote a few years ago from a sermon that I was listening to. And I want to say to us today, as we look through our next few verses in uh, 1 Peter, perspective is key. Last week, Anne kicked off our series, Living Hope, as we journey through 1 Peter this term. And Anne helpfully unpacked for us those, those open in 12 verses in the letter and I think it's a little bit, we have to view it like a little bit like a lens through which to see the rest of the letter. The first 12 verses are the lens through which we understand, Peter says, this is how your salvation has come about. And so everything from verse 13, what we're going to read today, right to the end of the letter in chapter 5, is to be read through that lens and is then to affect from verse 15 onwards, how then we are to live in response to that, how that salvation, that good news, affects the way that we live. So I'm going to read, if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Peter, uh, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 13. He starts with the word therefore, which means he's looking back to that lens that he's just referred to. Therefore, look back with that, from that place, he says in verse 13, therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, 
hypocrisy, envy and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. The first important thing about perspective that Peter says in these verses is look forward, look ahead. Keep your minds alert on the day when Jesus Christ will return. We've heard a lot this week about staying alert from Boris and the government, and we will no doubt continue to do so. But Peter wrote these words, stay alert, 2,000 years ago. How apt the time and maybe it is that this week we're looking at these verses. Peter comes on to say again, be alert right at the end of the letter in chapter 5. But be alert here, Peter says, be alert. And a fully sober mind. That we could translate that literally as saying, gird up the loins of your mind. What an expression that is, gird up the loins of your mind. What does that mean? Well, I think it maybe means something a little bit like this. Fasten it in as a seatbelt. Seatbelt it in, fasten it in, lock it in to your minds and don't lose sight of it. Set your hope on the day when Jesus will return. Anne last week hopefully said that Peter writes about hope not as some sort of wishful thinking. No, you know, Peter writes about hope here in, in the sense of eager expectation. So verse 13, look forward. We could read that saying, lock this into your minds. With eager expectation, Jesus will return. Don't lose sight of that. The future event will surely has got to affect the way that you live in the present. Now that happens all the time. Future events in our lives affect the way we live in the present. Think about it. Holidays, I know we can't go in any, but holidays, parties, weddings, um, uh, new babies, new pets, revision, if you like revision, all of those things are significant moments in the future that have an impact on our lives almost certainly for the good, and yet they affect the way that we live in the present. We, we, with the way we spend our time, the way we spend our money in preparing for that, the future event of those things affects how we live in the present as we journey towards that moment. And Peter's saying exactly the same here. Allow the future to affect how you live in the present. Because then he goes on to say the next thing about perspective is yes, look forward to verse 13, but verse 14 to 17, he's saying, look up, look up, look up. Look up at who God is and how you are to live in light of who God is. Do not, he says, you are obedient children. He said, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil ways you had when you lived in ignorance. Ignorance, that's such a strong phrase to use. But, one of my favourite words in the Holy New Testament, but, but, it appears several times in not just this chapter, but the whole of the book, but, just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. Peter is not saying live to become holy. No, no, remember the lens? You are holy through the salvation of which you've been won back to God in a relationship, through raising Jesus from the dead. You are holy, so be holy. Don't live to try and be holy. You are holy, so live a holy life from that place. And look up at our holy God who says, be holy as I am holy. Our God who is holy and perfect in every single way who cannot be in the presence of sin. And because of the glorious grace of Jesus, we can be in his presence because Jesus has dealt with your sin and my sin on the cross. And so Peter says, allow that then to affect the way that you live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. An important point to note in these four verses, 14, 15, 16, 17, is that there's three things that are described of God and of his God's nature and God's attributes. God is holy, 
God as Father and God as Judge. And as we look up at who God is, we've got to keep a, an eye on all of those things because that is God equally. God is equally holy. God is just as much of a Father and God is always a Judge. All true of God all the time. He is the most perfect, loving Father. He is the most perfect, holy God. And he is the most just judge you will ever, ever come across. Now, I know that some people don't like the thought of God being judge. But here's here's the reality. If we're saying God is holy, a God who cannot be in the presence of sin, God will one day in Jesus, when he returns, chapter four, we'll get to it in a few weeks, Jesus Christ will return to judge the living and the dead. So that means what Peter's saying, look up at God. He's holy, he's father, and he's judge. God is all of those things. And with that in view, looking forward to the day when Jesus returns, looking up at who God is, holy, father, and judge, look back then at the cross. That's the next thing about perspective. Look back, verse 18 to 21. Look back at what Jesus has done for you on the cross in his death and in his resurrection. He's reminding them again of the lens. He's almost just like sneaking it right in front of them just again, just so they don't forget it. Just so we don't forget it. Don't forget the lens. Look back. Always look back at what God has done. It was through Jesus' death on that cross that has saved you and brought you into a relationship with God. Peter says, verse 18, it's not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you have been redeemed. No, your gold, your silver, your money in your bank account, your fancy cars, your nice kitchen, your nice sofas. None of that. It's all perishable. None of that is going to save you or has saved you. Only one person, all sufficient in Jesus, has saved you. Peter is pointing out. He's at pains to say it. I can no, I just feel it as he writes it. You're not a follower of Jesus because of the things you own. You're a follower of Jesus because what Jesus has done for you. Never forget that. You've been ransomed. You've been set free. In other words, when he says you've been redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. Empty life. That's a strong, again, another strong phrase to describe something. How do I think empty life works itself out as an an illustration? I think it's a little bit like this. Who loves celebrations? We all do. Christmas time. All going to fight over the Maltese and the galaxy, aren't we? Well, that's always in my household, at least. Someone says, oh, Danny, do you want some celebrations? Like, yes, come on, bring it on. Pass them here. Panda over. Getting so excited. Here comes the celebrations. Oh. It's empty. The promise, the outer promise of the the, the celebration box. Here comes the chocolate in shiny plastic foil. You open it up and it's empty. That is what life is like without Jesus at the heart, without Jesus in your life. It's all appealing. But so often you discover and you realise that it's empty. Peter's saying you were ransomed, you were redeemed, you were saved from that empty way of life. Not by perishable things of silver and gold, but through the blood of Jesus on the cross. Verse 19, who was without blemish or defect. Who was around, verse 20, at the creation of the universe. And verse 21, through him, Jesus, you believe in God and you have a living faith and hope in God. Verse 3, chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth. That's what Peter's saying again here. Shoving the lens right in front of us. Don't lose sight of it. Look back. Look back. Absolute quality news. Look back. Look forward. Look up. Look back. And then finally, verse 22 to the end of our passage in chapter 2, verse 3. Look at what you have. The context, remember, 
As Anne said last week, they were a minority group of Christians persecuted for their faith in Jesus. And they had in that context two things which we have today. And we will have as long as we stay together as God's people. Two things. First one is this. Have you have one another? They had one another. Verse 22. You have one another and so love one another deeply from the depths of your heart, from the depths of your being. Love one another in deed, in action, in word, in encouragement, in prayer. Love one another deeply. Look at what you have and others will help you to keep perspective as you support and love one another. Second thing, we have what they have, the living and enduring word of God. I know Peter, when he wrote this, they didn't have the New Testament as we have it today. They had the Old Testament. They had the verbal stories of Jesus. Peter, of course, was an eyewitness to Jesus. But how much more glorious is it that we have the New Testament and the Old Testament? I mean, if they were able to, to get by, and they were more able to just get by, in fact, this early church in modern day Turkey, How much better placed are we with the whole of the living and enduring word of God in all its totality, in all its completeness? It's living, it's enduring. Life is going to pass away. That's why he then moves on to contrast what life is like. It's going to pass away like the flower and the grass of the field. But there it is again. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And that is what was preached to you. Verse 25. That is what was preached to you. Look at what you have. You have one another, so love one another deeply. You have God's living and enduring word, so digest it daily. Therefore, Peter says at the start of chapter two, we have all of that in mind, looking forward, looking up, looking back, looking at what you have. Throw off everything that distracts you. Throw off all those things at verse one um, and uh, verse one. And like newborn babies in verse 2 of chapter 2, crave the thing that is good for you. Babies know what is inherently good for them and so they want more of it. And as followers of Jesus, I, I am hopeful, certainly hopeful, with eager, expectationly hopeful that you know what is good for you and what is not. Crave that goodness because in verse 3 it says, you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good Keep on tasting, keep perspective. Keep perspective, perspective is key. Look forward, set your hope firmly with eager expectation on the day when Jesus will return. Look up at who God is as holy father and judge of all and allow that to affect how you live. Look back at all that Jesus has done on that cross in a way he's redeemed you and saved you and paid the price for your freedom with his blood. And look at what you have with one another, loving each other deeply and God's living and enduring worth. Perspective is key. We often think of God's presence as being provided to fix our problems. But what if God's presence is provided to fix our perspective? Look forward look up, look back, and look at what you have. Amen. Great. Thank you, Danny. Um, We're going to move into our final song now, and then we're going to have a blessing after that. So Matt and Katie.
Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Matt. I'm going to pray a blessing over us all in just a second. However, two quick things. Alpha starts 25th of May. Be thinking who you can invite, who can you go along with. Um, and then 30th of May, we've got 24 hours of prayer, get that date in your diary, and there's going to be more information to follow soon. So let me just pray this blessing over us as we go out into our weeks. Father, help us to live this day to the full being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone that we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all that we say and do. Amen. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.